Hello. In this video, we are going to demonstrate how to configure static VEXLAN tunnels between HPE 5940 switches with IMC, HPE Intelligent Management Framework. IMC provides a very useful VEXLAN management service module that can be used to configure and monitor VEXLAN tunnels. The same service module is also used to configure and monitor MPBGP eVPN. In another video, we will demonstrate eVPN management with such module. Please note that you may also use IMC in monitoring only mode in case of VXLAN tunnels are created through OVSDB, like with Nuage Overlay Solution or with VMware NSX. Before getting into the demonstration part, let me present you our test lab. The topology is quite simple. This is a layer 3 IP fabric with two access leaf switches and one core spine switch. All are HPE 5940 switches. The spine, spine 1, is not aware of any layer 2 domains and no VXLAN tunnel is terminated on this unit. Both leaves are VXLAN tunnel endpoint or VTEP. Each VTEP flutes the inner Ethernet frame to all the side-facing interfaces in the VXLAN tunnels. To avoid layer 2 loops, the destination VTEP do not flute the received frame back to VXLAN tunnels. One virtual machine is connected per VTEP, and our target is to get communication between these two VNs belonging to the same subnet. OSPF is configured so that the VXLAN source and destination IP addresses are reachable. We use here loopback0. In order to save IP space and ease the fabric provisioning, we use IP address unnumbered interface. Any control plane traffic is sourced from IP address of the loopback. Finally, test traffic consists in checking communication between VMs and to the subnet default gateway. So let's move now to the CLI to check initial configuration of this demonstration. Let's have a look now at leaf one switch on the left side. So if I do a display configuration, you will notice that um, I've got OSPF process configured so that I can exchange route information with Spine. Then I've got a 100 gig interface 1051 that is used to connect to the Spine and actually not using any IP address. We are using IP address unnumbered uh, sourced by the loopback zero in order to uh, have this IP connectivity between the leaf and the spine. So very useful for uh, ease of uh, provisioning the fabric and uh, efficiency of the IP address management. Uh, nothing specific regarding VPN instances is configured yet. Uh, we will configure the access to the VM with the port 10 gig 101. At this stage this is not set yet and uh, nothing specific as you can see on that configuration. One important part in order to have IMC configuring the switch for VXLAN tunnel and eVPN is uh, the netconf configuration prerequisite. So you have to make sure that there is a local user that is actually configured on the switch. Here this is HPE username and a netconf SOAP HTTPS for instance being enabled on the switch itself. Let's have a look uh, on spine one, display LLDP neighbor list. You'll see that spine one is connected to leaf one and leaf two. Let's have a quick look on the configuration. So again, here there is no VPN instances specific for that tenant that we are going to use. OSPF is configured. The same for the IP and uh, address and numbered on the interface uh, facing the leaf and no VPN and L2 VPN capability on that spine, pure IP fabric. 
So uh, please note that we'll have a 10 gig interface port that will be used in order to mirror traffic and to do some Wireshark on VXLAN tunnel information. Let's proceed to enabling L2VPN on LEAF1 and LEAF2. So for that, L2VPN enable on LEAF1, same on LEAF2, enable. Okay. Now let's go to IMC. So this is IMC home page that you can see here. Now we are going to uh, into the VXLAN management module. And in the device part where we need to import the uh, VTEP um, switches that we want to use for our demo. So let's click on import. Select device. Device view. So those switches are already inside IMC for the basic monitoring and management. Not for the VXLAN management, just for the basic management. So this is why I'll be able to see my switch here. So leaf one, leaf two. I'm going to take spine one as well in order to get that spine equipment being reported in the topology for the complete view of the fabric. And as those devices are selected, I can click on OK to finalize the import. OK. Now I can go to the device again and see that my devices are imported and seen as a VTEP type. Uh, what we have to, to do now is to um, get tunnel being configured between the switches. So for that, I'm going to create a tunnel, let's say 12, 1, 2, in order to have the tunnel between leaf 1 and leaf 2 and the tunnel 21, so 2 to 1, in order to have tunnel between leaf 2 and leaf 1. So let's go to the tunnel. I'm going to add. So my tunnel 12, I'm going to select the device that would be here in the device view. You will see only the device that have VTEP. So leaf one, source, that would be my loopback, destination, the other loopback of leaf two. Now that tunnel is created, let's click on add for the other tunnel. That that one would be configured on leaf two. My source IP would be the loopback of leaf two. My destination would be the loopback of leaf one. I can I can click add and meanwhile I'm waiting. I can go to leaf one and as you may see in the configuration now, we'll see a tunnel interface for VXLAN. Here we go, tunnel 12 mode VXLAN that was configured by IMC. So the two tunnels are being configured now. So let's get back to devices and configure global setting. In the global setting section, I'm going to enable the log of any MAC address being changed on the switch and I'm going uh, to enable the remote MAC address learning. So there is in that architecture there is of static VXLAN there is no control plane to learn about the MAC address. So we are using the data plane with MAC flooding in order to learn 
uh, which device own the MAC address. So that's why I am enabling the remote MAC address learning here. If you are using eVPN, you will select no in that case. Let's click OK and it's going to do that on all the switches. It will have no effect on the spine because L2 VPN is not enabled on spine. Okay, now let's move to the uh, the VXLAN part. I'm going to create a VSI that is attached to the 10 gig interface 101 that is facing the virtual machine. So for that, I'm selecting my Leaf One switch. The VSI, the VSI name that I want is Tenant 3. The VLAN ID that I'm going to use uh, is um, the VNI that would be seen on the VXLAN tunnel information. So in that case, that is 30010. I can put any type of uh, description here, like uh, uh, VXLAN demo. I'm going to activate the ARP flute separation by using the ARP cache capability of each leaf. Uh, the VSI flute suppression is kept. I'm not going to disable, disable any bump traffic on purpose. I'm keeping the statistic for the VSI and the VSI mode is not eVPN, it's tunnel because it's static. And the tunnel I'm going to use is 12 for leaf one. Let's add this VXLAN information to my switch. Okay, that has been successfully added now. I'm going to do the same for leaf 2. Okay, so the VSI name is tenant 3. The excellent ID is 10 parameters. <laughs> Meanwhile, we can have a look on leaf one to see what was configured. So you can see that in terms of uh, global settings, we have VXLAN local MAC report as we uh, decided to have. Then um, we have um, the VSI tenant three that has been uh, activated with the VXLAN ID 30010. Uh, that is associated with the tunnel 12 and that's it so now that I configured those two VXLAN I can assign uh, an attachment circuit to that VSI so I'm going to do this operation by a add service instance And I'm going to add that to the physical port. 
facing the virtual machine. So this is that particular port that I want to use. The service instance that I'm going to, to configure the, um, is, um, let's say for instance, 3001. That would be something I want to be tagged. And the VLAN used is, in my case, 930, because this is what I configured on my ESX host, as well as a vSwitch receiving the traffic tagged with 930. Once this is configured, and before configuring the same uh, service instance and attachment circuit on LEAF2, let's have a look at the first virtual machine that is connected to LEAF1. So let's check the IP address of that virtual machine, that is .10 at the end. Let's try to ping the other virtual machine. It is expected that it does not work because we didn't finish the configuration. So let's see the ARP content of that uh, virtual machine. So .11 has no um, corresponding uh, MAC address entry for that one on the same subnet. So let's take a look at the configuration of the uh, service instance on the other um, leaf switches. Add service instance. I will select the same 10 gig 101 port. Service ID would be 01 and the VLAN is the same. I can click on add. And meanwhile, we are waiting that for being configured. Let's take a look at the ping. Here we go. You can see now the ping is uh, working. So now I can do up minus n. You see I've got MAC address resolution for uh, .11. What I can do as well is get into the switch and do a display um, L2VPN MAC address. And you'll see that this MAC address of the remote is actually seen behind tunnel 12. If I get into leaf 2, you get the same type of information uh, than the the one that you have on leaf uh, 1 for tunnel 3 you will see that uh, the MAC address is seen behind tunnel uh, 21. To recap what IMC did configure we have now um, interface tunnel that has been created a VSI um, that was created with uh, ARP caching enabled with the VNI that is being set and assigned to the tunnel that is 12 here on the left and 21 on the right and the service instance and the attachment circuit that was configured on uh, the physical interface connecting the VM and now we have traffic uh, that is uh, flooding over that tunnel for layer 2 uh, between the two VMs here so let's stop right now for that first part of the video and the ne next part we are going to focus on layer 3 are routing and troubleshooting.